Guess where we're going? Yeah. Not that hard to guess. Sweet green, woo! Sweet green, worshiped by millennials and Gen Zers. Oh, about to get me a Hollywood boy! Who dutifully wait in lines around the block for their locally grown, celebrity chef inspired, premium priced salads. Is salad a hot, trendy, growing category? Absolutely not. When you take one of those big established things that everybody already eats and you elevate or you innovate around that category, it can create growth in what is otherwise a pretty flat marketplace. Gwyneth Paltrow's company Goop and Martha Stewart have endorsed the brand. And Selena Gomez, Catherine McPhee, Kendall Jenner, Cory Booker, and Malia Obama are all customers. There's a big movement of people connecting more deeply with their food. We were at uh, the right place at the right time. In the ever competitive fast casual dining category, Sweetgreens become a unicorn, valued at over $1 billion. If I had told you 25 years ago when Starbucks only had a few locations that someday it would be a global phenomenon or Chipotle, nobody would have believed that you know, Starbucks would now be worth $60 billion or Chipotle worth $16 billion. But that's what's happened and well, that's what we feel with, with uh, Sweetgreens. So has Sweet Green found the new sweet spot in America's palate? And will it become the next big thing? Sweet Green was started 11 years ago by three seniors at Georgetown University who met in an entrepreneurship class. We were sick of eating at the same places. None of them made us feel that good. The most delicious food, the coolest food, was all the least healthy. And we wanted to solve that problem. Live the sweet life with us, you know? The one thing they all had in common, they were the children of immigrant entrepreneurs. And like their parents, they wanted to run their own businesses. The very first menu uh, we actually made in my co-founder Nick's dorm room. Uh, and we even had these little you know, anonymous surveys people could fill out. The group raised $300,000 from 50 investors, mainly family and friends. And in 2007, three months after graduating, they opened the first Sweet Green. It was a 560 square foot shack near the Georgetown University campus, and the team had to install everything from scratch. It had no plumbing, it had no electricity. We really had no idea what we were doing. But people kept coming back. Within a year and a half, Sweet Green opened two more locations in DC and Maryland. By the time they made it to New York with store number 20 in 2013, they had raised over $35 million. We think there's a real chance to build Sweet Green into a, a national brand and maybe someday a global brand. And that's exactly what started happening. Core to Sweet Green's business model has always been its direct relationship with farmers. The first thing we do when we do come to a new city is connect with the local farmers and producers and build that supply chain. So every city has its own set of different farmers, producers, and growers. It's no easy task and was a risky goal for such a large scale. Many, but not all, are organic. Consumer packaging is compostable, and foods like steelhead, while less known, are offered in lieu of less sustainable ones like salmon. The menu changes seasonally and varies slightly by region. Sweetgreen has been criticized for its prices and for attracting a less than diverse crowd. The company says prices have gone up over the years to increase wages and benefits for its employees. So I think I'm going to go get some sweet green for dinner because I'm on my own for dinner. In yesterday land, consumers might have wanted a Rolex watch or some other badge product. Now food is a new badge product. The new rage, if you will, it used to be generations spent a fair amount of money on apparel and that was sort of a badge and today food is a badge. For six years, Sweet Green put on an annual music festival called the Sweet Life Festival, with a lineup that included Kendrick Lamar, Solange, The Weeknd, and Haim. But the company called it quits in 2017, due in part to festival fatigue and declining customer numbers. Sweet Green also teamed up with Kendrick Lamar on a shirt and salad in honor of his song. The company collaborates with celebrity chefs, including David Chang, Nancy Silverton, Mark Bittman, and Dan Barber to develop new menu items. The key to attracting and maintaining a customer base is a combination of consistency and spontaneity. Consistency means I deliver an exceptional product and I do it again and again and again. Spontaneity means I'm changing things up. The challenge for brands is making the spontaneity mixed up somewhat so that it's not predictable. Otherwise, the high user, the one who's highly frequent, uh, gets bored with it. 
Sweetgreen now has 91 restaurants in eight states, in addition to a corporate delivery program called Outpost, currently at 25 WeWorks and 75 other companies. In November 2018, Sweetgreen became the first ever restaurant unicorn. The $1 billion valuation. After receiving a $200 million seed age financing round led by Fidelity Investments. Other investors include restaurateurs Danny Meyer and Daniel Ballou, former Whole Foods CEO Walter Robb, and former AOL executive Steve Case and Ted Leonis. The total equity raised now is $365 million. The company says it plans to eventually go beyond just salads and bowls and plans to add more cities and locations to its roster. The key will be, can they make that supply chain transparency story work in the U.S. and internationally without growing so quick that they outrun the supply chain? Today, over 50% of Sweet Green's business happens digitally. You know, the things that we do see creating growth is the fast casual space in general, uh, you know, digital ordering, delivery, as more and more consumers actually want to consume the food at home. The company plans to go further with blockchain. By leveraging blockchain, we will know at any given moment exactly where our food came from, when it was picked, and when it got to us. And not only will we know, we'll be able to surface that information to our customers. This technology, which is said to grow rapidly in the agriculture sector over the next five years, could help prevent outbreaks like the romaine lettuce E. coli outbreak in California in 2008. Tonight, the head of the FDA says the romaine lettuce responsible for that outbreak that has sickened dozens of people likely started in California Sweetgreen is now cashless nationwide. The company made the switch in 2017 for both efficiency and robbery prevention, but the concept of cashless stores has sparked debate and even been banned in some states. The company also hopes its technology will give consumers a more personalized experience. Over time, as we start to get to know you and you're able to share information, whether that be your 23andMe or other sort of microbiome data with us, we're able to then curate menus based off of your preferences. Time will tell whether this technology will put Sweetgreen ahead of the pack or whether that's even what consumers want or need. While other things will change, like our restaurants, the way in which we serve food, our mission will never change. As we get bigger, the opportunity also gets bigger and we're just getting started.